Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. Welcome back to the vlog. Today, I'm here with Taylor. And Zoe's in Hi. the back. We're in Taylor's fancy Tesla. All right, not too much, Ooh. not too much. Okay, first of all, let me set the scene. It's Tuesday afternoon. I wanted to meet with Taylor and Zoe. We originally were supposed to be talking about content. I also just got a new camera. This is not the new camera that I'm filming on. This is still the old camera. But Taylor is, is you know, your new tech bestie. Mm -hmm. If you guys watch her content, you know. I'm she is very good with all things tech. So she was coming over to help me sort of set up and test out my new camera. Mm -hmm. We were like, okay, wait, let's go get some lunch then let's go to the camera store to check out some other stuff we just finished up lunch at pluckers have some good old wings tell them you never had it before never had it before it was it was pungent <laughs> that's true it was pungent and i enjoyed it it was the flavor it was, was very, good but it was so flavorful it was so intense today i, I don't know it's not normally like that. sometimes i just want to eat food that lights my brain on fire that doesn't you like it you know i liked it i yeah. love pluckers yeah. Okay, well, it was good, but it just was very, yeah, very strong flavors. Mm -hmm. And as we were walking out, <laughs> You're probably wondering why I'm holding this cup. As we were walking out, we were talking about like having ADHD and like losing track of time. And then we get to the car and I realized that I walked out of the restaurant with the actual- Like she grabbed her to-go box and the cup. Yeah, like, like I did not mean to take their, this is not a to-go cup. I did not mean to take this. And it was just so funny, the timing. It's a to-go cup now. Yeah, yeah, it just was the timing of me saying like, yeah, I'd be losing track of time and blah, blah. And then I realized, oops, I walked out with the it whole cup. It is huge. It's like- There's a big old- <laughs> But nobody stopped me. We walked past That's like true. three waitresses they and did they not just get paid enough to care. No. Sorry, I stole y'all's cup. But anyways, now we are heading to, to the camera store. Yes, the camera store, Precision <laughs> Camera. I'm very excited. I already got my new camera, but there's like a lens that Taylor says that I should check out yes. for the new camera. And we just need to look at a few and things. And maybe for this camera, we're just gonna experiment a little we'll bit. We'll see, I'll, I'll update y'all. Yeah. All right, you guys should be so proud of Raven. We we're came. Big girl upgrades today. And we conquered. Um, the RF is for me, just so we're clear. Oh, He's cool yeah, on that. Exactly. Okay. Of course, I couldn't not, but Raven got. Look, I'm getting a Sigma lens. Ooh, wow. she's getting some fancy glass, and she got the ZV-E1. So it's the brand new Sony that everyone's probably raving about on your timeline, depending on your timeline. <laughs> Depending on what kind of timeline you're on. This is the creator camera of the year. That's what they're saying. That's what the girlies are saying. Look at her brand making. New. It just came out. Yes, it's new. So we're ahead of the game. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> home from our field trip to Precision Camera. Got the goods. I am about to unbox everything and set everything up. And then I'm actually going to finish this vlog off with the new camera. So you guys should hopefully see the change in quality. Y'all gotta let me know in the comments how it looks. Was it worth the price tag? <laughs> Cause keep in mind, I bought a brand new camera body with the kit lens. And then I bought an additional Sigma lens on top. So this was definitely an investment. Definitely a major upgrade. So hopefully y'all can actually really tell Tell the difference when I switch over, cause <laughs> it just better be worth it. That's all I'm saying. But I'm excited. It was definitely overdue. This is my job. This is my career. This is my profession. I need to invest in the proper quality equipment. The only thing I'm worried about is this is like bigger than what I'm used to. What I'm filming on now is more compact, smaller, lightweight. The lens is smaller. This lens is considerably bigger and heavier. So as far as carrying it around on the go, I'm a little worried about how big and heavy it is and just sort of like fancy and fragile, you know, when you're like taking it out and about, but we're gonna see. So here is the camera body. This is the, the Sony ZV-E1. I got it with the kit lens. You can just buy just the body by itself, but I went ahead and got it with the kit lens that you can get with it because that's just what they told me to do at the camera store, I don't know. I'm honestly not as knowledgeable about cameras and lenses as I should be being 
being that I've been a content creator for so long, you would think I would know more about this stuff. And I did start to learn about it. Yeah, I don't really know too, too much, but I do know that this is the kit lens that you can get that comes with this camera. So this is sort of like your basic lens to sort of just get you started. But I bought this additional Sigma lens which is the Sigma 24 millimeter F2. You see the size difference between the regular kit lens and this one, and this one's like heavy. It's gonna give me that look that I want. So let's see. First clip with the new camera. Do we immediately see a big difference? Same exact framing, same exact spot we were just in, same exact lighting. Do we see a difference? Can y'all tell the difference? What do we think? Is it an amazing, spectacular, noticeable difference or is it kind of just like, eh? Or do you not see a difference at all? Be honest, let me know. I won't really be able to fully see the side by side until I, you know, get to more of the editing portion. Is it giving quality? Is it giving upgrade? Is it giving, you can see every pore in my skin. <laughs> so for reference, the previous camera I was using is this one. This is the Sony a6400. I've used this for the past couple of years. I like it. I like the fact that it has like, you know, the flip up screen. It does shoot in 4K. It's a nice, compact size for vlogging on the go. I only ever used it with the kit lens. I never experimented with getting different lenses for it, which you can do because this one does come off and everything. I feel like this is still a really good camera, but it's just not the latest and greatest compared to this one. She served me well. I'm still gonna keep this one. This is actually my mom's. Me and my mom have the exact same camera. She has one, I have one. Mine broke recently because I dropped it, the screen broke. So while we were in the camera store, I actually did give them mine so they could fix the screen. That way I still have it and it still works. So I can still use it as like a backup secondary camera to this one, or if I'm ever shooting something where I want multiple angles going at the same time, time like I'll still have this one because this is still a good camera and everything. What do we think? What do we think? Let's walk around with it and see it in some different lighting, different areas of the home. This is like right in front of a window. It's kind of gloomy outside today so it's really not that much light coming in but like this is like walking around. I'm showing you guys but I'm also recording this for my own purposes because I, I want to like see Kind of see how it is in different settings. And then what if we go somewhere with no natural light? Like I'm gonna go in the bathroom. First of all, this is like in the dark. Oh, it's really good in low light. Cause I'm like completely in the dark in here almost. Okay, close the door. This is like actual darkness. And then if we just turn on the light, so like artificial bathroom lighting looks like this. Okay. Okay, here's something to try, like autofocus. Oh, autofocus is fast. So I definitely have to get used to the fact that this is a heavier setup because of the bigger lens and everything. And then I also have to get used to the fact that the screen flips out to the side versus up at the top like I'm used to because it kind of makes me feel like I'm looking off to the side to see myself. And I'm used to being able to look just like right above the lens. I feel like I'm looking off. Like when I look like this, I'm looking at myself right now versus looking into the camera lens. So. I don't love that, but just take some getting used to. Another thing that I went ahead and got, two things. I ordered this off of Amazon as part of my equipment upgrade. This is a light panel. So it came with its own little separate tripod, but you can also just connect it to the top of your camera or like a bigger tripod or just wherever you want to connect it to. And it has brightness control and temperature control. You can make it super warm or super, this is like super cool versus super warm, super bright versus dimmed down. I got this one specifically because it attaches to the top of your camera. So instead of like setting up all these different separate lights, I could just have this on top of the camera and be like on the go with it. Now, obviously this is sort of a huge thing. Like I'm not to say that I'm gonna take this with me to Target and film out in public, but just for like certain shots at home. Actually, let me see what it looks like. So like even just for like a shot like this, if I just wanted like a little bit better lighting, you know, have my whole little setup all in one connected piece. I feel like that just sort of comes in handy. So this is what it looks like all together. <laughs> so again, not something that I'm just gonna take out 
out and about running errands, but for certain things, I feel like it's nice to have just the all-in-one little setup. Wow, very professional. Okay, so then the other thing that I ordered besides the smaller light are these bigger lights. Basically same thing, but these are actually slightly bigger and they go on stands, like tripod stands. It comes as a set of two. It's by this same popular lighting brand that you can get off of Amazon. So this is what the light panels look like. Same sort of thing, like you can adjust the brightness and everything on the back, but then it comes with the two stands to put them on. So this is more so for like when I'm filming my podcast in my office and I need to set up full lighting for the full room. I need to have like lights on either side and really like spread out, then this would be good for that. It's just sort of an upgrade from what I currently have. Yeah, there is definitely a considerable size difference. This is too big to be putting on top of a camera, honestly, for what I'm trying to do. You can put this on top of your camera the same way. It actually comes with the same attachment. So I could have just got this and then put this on top of my camera, but it's just like, this is already big. This is even bigger. So I do like having the option of like the smaller, lighter one. I'm stocked up, okay? And as y'all know, if y'all keep up with my vlogs, I've got my new and improved tech closet to keep all of this stuff in. So I'm feeling very professional with all of my upgraded supplies, not supplies, but equipment, equipment, and actually having a nice proper place to store it all. I mean, wow, look at me. So it is 11.15 at night. I am about to reheat my dinner that I didn't finish earlier. Zaya and I are obsessed with this one Chinese restaurant near us that makes like the best chicken fried rice. Zaya loves it. She requests it at least once a week for me to order it on DoorDash and I actually really like it too. So we got our favorite tonight. I got distracted while I was eating. I never finished my food because I was on the phone with my new friend, Crystal. If you guys watch my South by Southwest vlog, you know that I connected with another local content creator, Crystal Nicole, Curly Chris, and she does like beauty, fashion, lifestyle content. And yeah, we met at one of the influencer events at South by Southwest. West and we just sort of instantly hit it off and ended up sort of spending the rest of that weekend together going to all the different events and ever since then we've been sort of meaning to like get together again and hang out but just haven't gotten a chance to and it just sort of fell together that we were like let's go to Miami just you and me let's do a little girl's trip to Miami she's been itching to go to Miami I'm always itching to go to Miami if you know me you know I love Miami I've been a handful of times and I'm always willing to go back so yeah we were just on the phone planning our Miami trip. Yeah, basically it just ended up working out because like I had some travel plans and they got canceled and they got rescheduled and then I was like, what am I gonna do? Cause I'm not gonna do this. It just was like this whole thing where I was like, thought I was gonna go somewhere and then I wasn't and then I was kind of disappointed. But then Crystal ended up coming in clutch being like, I'll go with you. So it just ended up working out. So we were on FaceTime just looking at hotels and flights and stuff. And we did book our flight and our hotel and everything. So it is official. We are going to Miami, not this weekend. Cause this weekend is Mother's Day, which more on that later, but no next weekend. We're just gonna do like a little quick little three-day trip, you know? I think it's gonna be fun because like I said, I've been wanting to connect more with her and hang out with her. And like I said, I'm always down for Miami. Good morning, y'all. Zoe is here. It is 9.35 on Wednesday morning. I can't believe it's already Wednesday. Like what's happening? Bye -bye. Today's mission is to really get things sorted as far as our plan for this very cute Mother's Day brunch that Sadie and I are hosting this Saturday. So we only have a couple of days. I think I briefly mentioned this to you guys before. We have our group of mom friends. It's me, Sadie, Taylor Lloyd, our other friend Taylor Purnell, our friend Mimi, our other friend Jade. Unfortunately, one of the Taylors and Jade is actually not gonna be able to come to the brunch, but we do have this whole group of mom friends and we just sort of wanted to do something cute for Mother's Day. So Sadie actually was the one who came up with this sort of garden party, tea party, Italian summer, floral, cutesy brunch vibe. But we didn't wanna go too crazy because it is just gonna be the four of us now. And as I just said, it's Wednesday and we're doing it on Saturday. Saturday, so we only have a couple of days to pull this all together. So we're just gonna do something small, intimate, but still cute and still, you know, nice. But it's time to get it rolling. Like we literally haven't really done anything at all to prepare for it yet. 
<laughs> Zoe has been on my case like, um, aren't you having a brunch this weekend? Like what's going on with that? So the main plan is to use a lot of stuff that I already have. I mean, y'all know I have a lot of entertaining supplies in here. I have even like tablecloths and stuff left over from Zaya's birthday that we can use. So that's why I'm not too worried about it because it shouldn't be a lot of stuff that we have to like make or do or get. To set the scene, originally we thought about having it in my backyard, but the weather is looking kind of questionable. It's been very rainy and gloomy all week and it's looking like it could possibly be raining on Saturday as well so just to be safe we're gonna just do it inside here at the dining table and we really want to do what Sadie had in her inspo pics which is like just setting a beautiful floral garden tea party tablescape so I have that light pink tablecloth from Zaya's birthday party we'll put that down we'll have a bunch of flowers and candlesticks and it's gonna be a brunch so all the brunch food I'm thinking we could do that sort of it's almost like family style where you have like all the food on the table and I have a lot of trays and boards and things that we can use to just sort of like set everything on the table. Zoe actually came up with a really cute idea of doing a hanging flower garland. So I'll pop up a picture on the screen so y'all see what I'm talking about, but hanging it from this light fixture to just add even more of that like floral springtime vibe. And then basically we're gonna do like typical brunch food, mimosas with different like juices and fruit and stuff like that and a non alcoholic option for Taylor who doesn't drink. I also want to do some really cute like customized goodie bags as like my Mother's Day gift to everyone. So that'll be like a little DIY. We wanted to do some sort of little activity. We landed on jewelry making. So I think we're going to do like beaded bracelets and provide the beads that have letters on them so that if the moms want to like make a bracelet that has their kids name on it, that it's sort of like Mother's Day themed. I think that'll be cute. That's the main plan. Again, and nothing too crazy. It's all just gonna be contained sort of in this main dining room area. You know, it's not like the whole crazy setup like I've done before. Again, it's just gonna be us four, but we do need to get a move on with buying the things we do need to buy, prepping, DIYing. There's gonna be a little bit of cooking involved, not too much. Like I said, Sadie is actually kind of co-hosting it with me. So I'm sort of collaborating with her and getting her ideas and we're gonna work together to host this on Saturday. So as far as supplies, I think we're definitely planning on using some of these tiered trays as like part of the tablescape. So having the food all piled up on there mixed in with having a little, like multiple vases of flowers. I do have these vases. I think glass vases would work for our vision. I have these purple ones and a few clear ones. I would like to have maybe multiple different colors sort of like this. These are actually just from Dollar Tree. So we should probably actually go back there and see what other colors they have because I think they do have some more colors. Candlesticks, I only have plain like white ones, which we can mix in, but I also would like to have colorful ones too. And I only have a couple of little candle holders, so I would need more of those. Zoe had mentioned before that we could go thrifting maybe also to find like vases, candle holders. They might even just have like some other cute little random springtime garden party looking tea party stuff. I mean, in the sort of glassware area, you never know what you might find. So I think a trip to the thrift store would be good. But again, I also Dollar Tree I know has glass vases and candles candlesticks and stuff too. So we can go there. Of course we have our grocery shopping list and then we have our Michael's craft store shopping list to get all the beads and whatever else. So I think we're gonna carve out some time today to do the shopping. I'm waiting to hear back from Sadie to make sure there's not anything else she wants to add. FaceTiming Sadie. Say comprehensive report. Yes, <laughs> the comprehensive report. Comprehensive report? So we're at Dollar Tree. One of the supplies we need is faux flowers for our flower garland. Dollar Tree faux flowers are not very, you know, nice or realistic, but they are affordable and we do kind of need a lot of them. So something to consider, but I think we'll swing back around to this. So they don't have the selection of little glass faces. They only have these little plain ones, which is not what I was looking for. And then they have these little plastic things that are like way too neon and not not the vibe. So no luck there. Also, they don't have any cute candlesticks over there either. So Dollar Tree might be a bust today. They have one singular purple, whatever, base. They've got these little ones, which aren't bad, but not really what I was envisioning. Let's just get one. Okay. 
random, but I also always have to grab spicy chicken yakisoba while I'm at Dollar Tree because this is the only place I can ever find it. They don't carry it at any of the other normal grocery stores I go to. <laughs> so anytime I'm here, I grab a handful. So now we're going to the lobby of hobbies and hopefully we'll have better luck because we're still looking for quite a few things. Hobby Lobby does have a really big selection of fake flowers. So this is probably our best bet here as far as like nice looking ones. They can tend to be a little expensive. Like this is $6 for this one little stem. $8.99. Okay, so Hobby Lobby has the jackpot of all the different colors of candlesticks. I feel like we're we're sort of just doing like a pastel-y vibe, you know, maybe different. They've got short and long, short, medium and long actually. They are like $1.30, $1.50 a piece, so not bad. Should we mix in gold? Now we have to be mindful for every stick we buy, we need a holder. So let's not overdo it now. I'm feeling like there should be some sort of DIY, like what else can hold a candlestick up besides buying an actual glass holder? I like the glass holders, they definitely fit the vibe. But they're $4 each? This is a quick $40 in candlestick holders, which seems a bit excessive, or is there some sort of DIY that we could do? You know what I mean? Ideally, we could like go to a thrift store and find a bunch of them for 50 cents each. A lot of the Goodwills around here, they're just selling like new overstock, like it looks like a Ross or a TJ Maxx or something. Trying to get beads for the bracelet making. Inspired by these, it's like shell beads, gold, cute little letter beads. This, I like sort of just the neutral earth tones just so that it doesn't end up looking too childish like once you start getting into the rainbow colors i don't really love that i don't think the ladies will either earth tone shell beads gold letter charms pearls i was gonna do the colorful but i think not so we have our selection of beads and tools we're missing the actual letter beads we'll have to try to find those online they don't have them here also looking for the candlestick holders online what else are we missing we need vases, vinyl. See, like I'm so good at repeating stuff and there's not a camera in front of me and I just, uh, uh. Then yeah, goodie bag stuff and vases. And they did have some cute vases like in the front decor area where they have like all the glass. Okay, let's go look at that. Tabletop decor, 50% off. So this stuff is on sale. They have little things like that. $14.99, so $7.50. I don't know if that looks stupid, but like this small one can put a candle in it, maybe? Is that Why stupid? Why would you put a, a candle in that? I don't bag? know, I feel like I've seen it done, but. It, it can be done. Your Halloween candles are like that. I don't know if I want this for $7. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. <laughs> so here is our haul from today. We didn't get everything. This is a good start. The jewelry making stuff, still need more stuff for that. Various candlesticks. I'm feeling like these are maybe a little bit too neon. Like, I don't know if that looks good together, but we'll see. And then our two little vases that we got from Dollar Tree. We were really hoping to find more little vases like this, but I am now going to check on Amazon for more stuff. Hello bougie. I'm just gonna gather some of the stuff out of my pantry that I think I'm gonna use just so I can start seeing everything all together and get a better idea. Zoe recently sort of reorganized and zhuzhed up all of my party and holiday bins on this section in the garage and actually labeled them. It's looking a lot better over here and now I know exactly where the pink tablecloths are. Oh, you know what? I do also have the pretzel board from the Barbie party. Not only can you use this for pretzels, but you can use it for donuts as well. And it's cute and pink. Maybe I could pull this out and you could do donuts, you could do bagels for the brunch theme. Maybe we should use this. That might be cute if I rip this off. Okay, so now we're here. Still doesn't look like much, but candlesticks, a few vases. Again, I have more stuff that I need to buy, but keep in mind, we're basically only setting one table. We're basically just putting everything on my dining table. So it's not a whole bunch of stuff, but it's more like just attention to detail, you know? I feel like a lot of y'all are probably looking at that little pile right now and not really seeing the vision. Okay, but just think about the inspo pics. 
candlesticks, the fresh flowers are a huge part of it. So when we get the flowers, that'll really add something. The candles, the food itself is a huge part of it. You know, just, just have faith, okay? <laughs> Y'all know the drill by now. After school, we do crafts. We are still making our way through all the different little kits that she got for her birthday. Today's choice is the Make It Real Ultimate Bead Studio, which came with all these different little beads. Coincidentally, some similar stuff that we were just looking at and talking about in Hobby Lobby for our Mother's Day thing. And this craft, Zaya doesn't even really need help with it. She pulled it out and got started herself because we've already done jewelry making before. Just recently, I was showing Zaya how to make a necklace with like, beads and actually showing her how to add the jump ring and the clasp and stuff like that. I used to really love jewelry making. I used to take classes with my mom actually. It was actually like a bead store slash jewelry making studio that we would like go take classes at. And I just sort of self-taught as well, like making up stuff on my own. And I actually had like a little business in middle school where I made jewelry and sold it out of my locker. <laughs> I haven't really messed with it recently, but I still have all of my tools and supplies and I have a lot of stuff in the craft room. Like last Last week, it was one of her friend's birthday. So as part of her birthday present, I showed Zaya how to make like this really cute little necklace. So she made one for her friend with her friend's name on it, but then of course she wanted to make one for herself as well. So this is what she made. It's on a little gold chain and I showed her how to put the little clasp and jump ring on it and everything to make it a little bit more legit. And she picked out her beads and her pattern and strung them on there. So you measure your string first. So you think about what kind of necklace you wanna make. Do you want it to hang down low? or be a little bit shorter and tighter. Starting at the ends, you don't wanna cut the string in the middle cause that's wasteful. Okay, now grab that spot where you're gonna have to cut it. Okay, hang on to that so you know where that spot is. And now you can cut it. Now you know you got the right size to actually do a necklace. Okay, back to the Mother's Day brunch shopping. I am placing an Amazon order. So I found a set of 12 just clear glass candlestick holders. I think this will be probably our best bet because that's about how many candlesticks we're probably gonna use. Then they have these cute gold letter little beads, which I think is perfect. It's just like our inspo picks for the little bracelets that we're gonna make. $7.99, so that's cute. Then I found a perfect little set of clear cosmetic bags, which will be perfect for the goodie bag gifts that I wanna make for the girlies. I'm gonna cricket them and put their names on the front of each bag. This comes as a set of three, which is perfect because it's three friends that I need to make them for. Then I started shopping for things to fill the bags with because I don't just wanna give them an empty bag. So some cute little nude claw clips, my favorite powder puff, Puff makeup applicators that I love. And then a cute set of like matching nude brown satin scrunchies, which I also really love. So sort of like a few of my favorite things sort of vibe, but following a color scheme so that it looks cute in the clear bag. I took my hat off and I look crazy, but I'm gonna start with this Amazon order. I definitely wanna get a couple more things to put in the goodie bags and still try to stick to like the nude brown color scheme. So I'm not sure what else to add. It's hard with like cosmetics cosmetics and beauty products because everyone has their preference for what sort of products they actually use. So but yeah, I feel like we're making good progress now. So another ongoing project, I've mentioned this to you guys before, but I really wanna plant trees across my fence line on both sides to create some privacy from my neighbors. Cause as of right now, this side is not so bad. Cause as you can see, my neighbors have some sort of privacy sort of built in on this other side. It is completely wide open to the neighbors, as you can see. And that makes it a little bit awkward when we're trying to like enjoy the pool and stuff. So I always knew, it was always part of the plan to plant some sort of trees or privacy hedges along both sides. Basically on this side, I only need to go from about here to the end. And then on this side, it's going to be symmetrical because it lines up like where this ends off, lines up to where the neighbor's house is. 
I'm estimating about five trees on each side. So a total of 10 trees that I would need to plant. But the thing is, a lot of people, when they buy trees, they buy them like baby size and they plant them and they let them grow. Trees take years and years and years to grow tall. I don't have years to wait. <laughs> to actually get privacy, I don't wanna wait. So I want to buy pretty mature plants so that as soon as they get in the ground, they'll already be tall enough to actually be providing some privacy. My dad is helping with this project. The fence itself is about five, a little over five feet tall. So that's, yeah, I was thinking like six feet minimum, which is also like person height anyway. So just enough to block eye level, which, isn't giving full privacy necessarily, but it's like giving me a really good head start. This is 19 feet. The thing on this side is that this side is lifted up, like the patio was raised. So technically, I don't know if you want it. When you're standing right here, you could see higher. Well, is it, is the issue seeing over there or them seeing us? Both, but more so them seeing us, I guess. So I guess that it still helps from their side. Yeah. Question is, do you want one maybe a little, you know, you want them a little bit taller because of that? Now that's seven feet. Seven feet taller is better. So six feet, definitely minimum. The taller the tree, the more expensive. So yeah, we've been kind of going back and forth about the trees, trying to figure out like the exact type of tree, size, quantity. Like there's a lot that goes into it to make sure we're doing it right. I think we finally have the information that we need. Now it's a matter of tracking them down, finding the best place to get them from, the best person to install them, getting multiple quotes. So that's what my dad is helping with. He has a little bit more knowledge in this area than I do. I'm really trying to get this done for this season. Like I want them planted so we can enjoy the pool this summer with some privacy. And we also need to get them planted before the heat of the summer because you don't want to be planting fresh stuff during the hottest days of the summer. So we're kind of on a little bit of a time crunch to hurry up and get this done, but fingers crossed. Okay, so we are on the way to one of the nurseries. This is actually the nursery. Y'all have seen me go here multiple times recently. I was saying I always get my plants from here. My dad is here now. He called me, he was like, hey, I'm here. They have a really good selection of XYZ type of tree that they say would work perfectly. They just got a shipment. And he basically told me that I need to come now and buy the trees now before somebody else buys them because apparently they're like really popular. So we're on the way. I guess we're getting trees today. I didn't think it was gonna be today, literally, but we'll see. Choosing which laurel trees I want. Looking for the tallest ones so I can get the most bang for my buck. I think I know which ones I want. She's gonna tag them and then I'm gonna go like pay for them, schedule the installation and delivery. So they'll stay here until their available date that they're gonna come to my house and bring them and plant them. Okay, so yay, great news. Finished up at the nursery, officially purchased eight laurel trees. I ended up getting eight so that I could do four on each side just because in their expert opinion, they said that that's all I had space for. So trusting them, I thought I needed 10. I got eight. If anything, I can always buy more and add to it, but I didn't want to do too much and then it was crowded. Um, and they surprisingly had an opening this weekend. They said they could plant them. If not this weekend, then probably next week. So really soon, I'm going to have trees. I did not think it was gonna happen that soon. I did not think I was gonna be purchasing trees today and possibly having trees planted by next week, but that's really good. I'm really excited. This has been something I have been really wanting for a long time, especially since the pool has been done. Cause I mean, look at that. It literally just looks directly into the neighbor's yard. So I'm gonna be very excited to have that whole section covered. In other good news, speaking of plants, I don't remember if I told y'all, but I purchased, I purchased these. I wasn't hundred percent sure about them 
them, but I decided that they're fine. So they just need to be planted. There's one on this side, one on the other side, and then there's another replacement plant for that bed over there. So it's three plants that just need to be planted to replace our fallen soldiers. The other landscaper people who I was previously working with, they said that they can come today and plant these for me. So they should be coming around. There's my dad bringing Zaya home from school. So they should be coming in the next couple of hours to plant these. So here's the other one, just to replace this one because it's looking real sad compared to its sisters. The sister girls, they're doing fine. They're growing, they're thriving. They're getting pretty tall. This third one, for whatever reason, is just not thriving. It's not completely dead. It's been like this the whole time and it's not getting any better. So I would rather have them be equal. So I'm just gonna replace it. I think I'm gonna tell them to keep this one though and just like put it in a pot off to the side. That way I can still keep it and not waste it and still try to bring it back to life elsewhere. But just so that this area looks better. I also wanted to show y'all what the jasmine vines are looking like. Look, they're all growing back. Back. So they had to get completely cut back because of the freezing weather, but they've all started to grow back. They've got a long way to go to reach all the way up to the top of the trellis and completely fill in the whole trellis. That's gonna take a long time, obviously, but they're growing, they're growing, they're thriving, they're doing good. That's good, I didn't have to replace them. There's only a couple of them that look like they may never come back just because they haven't sprouted up at all. Yeah, it looks like about six of of them that have not started to grow back at all yet. I'm trying to be patient because I know they could just be moving slower than the rest. So I don't want to rip them out just yet because what if they do come back? At the same time, like it has been like a couple of months and I don't see any little sprout of anything. So I'm wondering if I should replace those. My mom just texted me and told me that she found some at HEB for $29 if I need some, but I'm trying to decide like, should I wait longer and see if they sprout up? Or should I just go ahead and replace them? I don't know. Wow, guys, look, we made so much unexpected progress today. The landscaping guys just left, so they replaced this plant. It's looking good. Now the three look a lot more equal. They also went ahead and planted the ones in these beds. So these, this is called Mexican feather grass. So those are in there. They like fluff up in the spring, I think. They get a lot more fluffy than that. And then here's this one on the other side, same thing, everything's symmetrical. So it looks a little scrawny right now, but it'll fluff up. So yay, that's all done and refreshed. I'm feeling really happy about that. My jasmine plants are growing back in. I'm feeling happy about that. And yeah, once I get the trees put in, which will be done in the next like couple of weeks, then I think the only other thing that I need for back here is I just remembered that I said that I wanted to get another one of these umbrellas because I only have one over here with this sitting area. And then I have like the big one with the dining table, but I don't have another umbrella over here with these chairs, which me personally, I got these chairs because I like to lay out in the sun, in the direct sun, not in the shade. I like to lay out on these chairs and get a tan. So me personally, I wouldn't use an umbrella with those chairs because I purposely want to be in the sun. But a lot of times when I have my friends over, they don't want to be in the sun. They want to be in the shade. So I always notice that people congregate in the shade. They don't want to be right there. So I feel like I should put an umbrella over there just to have it, just so that when I have guests over, they have that option and it'll be symmetrical. Like I keep saying, I want to get some accessories to go up here. It's looking real plain on the couch and coffee table. We need accent pillows. We need like maybe a rug. We need I don't know what we need, but we need some little accessories, nothing crazy. Yeah, I feel like at that point, my backyard will actually be done. Like done, done, finally. I mean, I'm sure there's always gonna be like little things that I wanna change and switch out. But as far as like just the main original plan actually being completed, it'll finally be done. Wow. It's been a long time coming. If you've been watching since this just used to be a patch of grass, you know it's been a long time coming. Hello, it is Friday morning. I am in my closet because remember I was talking about my closet update that I'm doing, getting some stuff added and fixed. They are actually on their way right now 
to come and do that so I sort of needed to get my closet in order because I had clothes all over the floor and stuff that I was in the middle of organizing so I'm trying to hurry up and sort of like clear out the area before they get here to do the little install or whatever I'm having to sort of reorganize everything to make it fit right basically the goal I'm trying to achieve is having better storage for my handbags so I'm adding shelves right here and that means that I had to move everything that was right here elsewhere. I've got clothes all over my bed. I'm gonna have to just wait until they're done with the install and then come and obviously put everything back in its place. But right now I'm just sort of trying to like clear out the space for them to work. So I guess I'm just gonna move all of this into my bedroom for now. So here's sort of the before view of this little section here. That's the hanging rod that normally hangs right here and I had clothes hanging there, but we're gonna like switch it around for my bags. My laundry hamper drawer that they need to fix cause it completely broke off the track. So I just wanted to clear that out for them. I still have some stuff over here, but they're not doing anything to this side. So that should be fine. So this is what my bedroom is looking like in the meantime, everything that I had to take out. And then I've got to find a way to put this all back in, but in a totally different way than how I had it. So wish me luck with that. So it's 10.06 a.m. right now. Don't mind the fact that I look like a three-year-old with my hair like this. I just, <laughs> we're not gonna talk about it. Zoe is on her way over here. She went to Trader Joe's first before coming over here to get some fresh flowers for our Mother's Day brunch tomorrow. And so she should be here any minute with the flowers. And Sadie is gonna go do the grocery shopping for all the food for the brunch and then she'll be over here and then we're gonna start prepping everything for the brunch. That's like the main task for today is just making sure that we have as much pre-prepped as possible so we're not rushing around tomorrow morning since the brunch starts at 11 a.m. I still don't really have an outfit so I think later today I may try to go to the mall and maybe see if like Zara has something and I still need to make the goodie bags for the girls. The stuff just came in from Amazon late last night. Okay, so these are the makeup bags. Uh, they're a little smaller than I thought. I guess I didn't pay attention to the dimensions like I should have. I thought they were gonna be a little bigger than this, but that's okay. I think they'll still work. Oh, these are cute. So here's the set of claw clips that I got in all the neutral colors. The makeup powder puffs also to go in there. Oh, here's our beads for our bracelets that we're gonna be making during the brunch. These are the neutral colored scrunchies. Lastly, the glass candle holders. So it's a set of 12 and this is what they look like. They're actually nice and sturdy and thick for all our little candlesticks that we got. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Got the goods. Got the flowers. Oh, pretty. Okay, so the closet install guy is here. He just went outside to grab something, but so far he had to drill some extra holes for how the shelves are gonna go. And we'll see how it ends up looking. Here are the extra shelves. Okay, back to the goodie bags. Here's sort of the idea. Two claw clips, different styles, and then two scrunchies, and then two of the powder puffs. And then it's got like the dark brown, the medium brown, the light brown, unintentionally matching each person's skin tone. I wasn't even trying to do that, but like we have like Sadie, Taylor, Mimi. Well, Taylor and Mimi are sort of both in this skin tone. But anyways, I wasn't supposed to be the point. I just wanted like cute neutral colors. I mean, that's really it that would like fit nicely in these bags since the bags are smaller than I thought they were. But I think that's still cute. And then I'm gonna put, I'm trying to decide what I want it to say. Like, do I just wanna put their name going across it? Do I wanna put something funny? Do I wanna put something Mother's Day related like MILF or Hot Mama or something like that? I'm trying to decide what I wanted to say. And then I'm gonna stick those on and make it cute. Okay, here's what I came up with for the Cricut vinyl designs for the bag. Bags. I had three different ideas, so I think I'm just gonna make each one and then I'll let the girls choose which one they want. Since they won't actually have their names on it, they can just pick which one. You know, little cheeky, little funny. We have one, you know, calm one, but with my friends, I I know my friends and I know their sense of humor, so I feel like they will like this. <laughs> Not for everybody, but I think it's cute. So I just typed it up. I chose fonts on the Cricut design space and I am just going to cut them out of, I have this sort of 
bronzy color, which I think could be cute. I wish I had a rose gold that would kind of match the bag, but this sort of matches the zipper on the bag. So I think that would be cute. That's what I'm leaning towards. I do also have black, white, and then I have like a true gold, but this is like, I don't know, a little too metallic. I think that might be a little too much. Or I could do black or white, but I'm leaning towards this. Okay, so the closet guy just left. We have good news and bad news. Good news is he did my shelves like I wanted. I still have to mess around with the exact configuration and how I wanna put everything on there. So I'll do that later, but now I at least have the shelves. I have the option to put them in there. The laundry hamper did not get done because what they brought me as a solution was extremely similar to the first way that I had it that broke. So why would I wanna go back to the first thing that I had when I've already had two things since then? You know what I mean? It was like new and improved version, but it wasn't that improved. So I was like, no, I don't want that. That's really similar to the first thing that I had. I said I wanted doors, but okay. And of course he didn't have the doors that I wanted. So we're gonna have to redo, come back, do it again. So I don't know what day they're gonna come back to actually do this, but for now I just have an empty thing, like a no door on it, just, just a thing with a hamper, but whatever. Stay tuned for that update, I guess, but you know, we got my shelves done. That's progress. Better than nothing, I suppose. <laughs> what? You look so tan. Really? Yeah. Oh. Were you in the sun? No, not since so Hawaii. Hello. I mean, Hawaii? <laughs> you went to Hawaii? So turn. Sadie is here. She brought all the goods, <laughs> berries and meats and juices and things, oranges and donuts and muffins and bagels. Zoe's bringing in the rest of our supplies that we have so far. But we decided to try doing our little mini naked cakes by using yes. a pre-made sheet cake from the store so we don't have to bake it from scratch. Wish us luck with that. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna scrape the cake of said frosting to give it that not distressed, but bare boned look. Mm -hmm. We're gonna actually probably use this. This is, I just looked at this. This is the perfect size mm -hmm. to make circles, stack them, layer them, and put the edible flowers on top. Well, you might not even need to scrape the cake. If you just think a about it. Bit on the sides. But if you go a little bit in from the side, it'll be naked oh, on yeah, the yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, on the sides. Yes. We'll play with it, but it should be very easy to do. If all else fails, I think I have a cake mix in my pantry no, if we need good. to. We need backup. I'm just a little worried about the messiness. If exactly. it's gonna end up looking cute or if it's gonna like no, fall it'll apart. Look cute. Okay, Sadie has a lot of faith. I do. We love that positive attitude. I'm a little skeptical, but we will see. We just wanted to start prepping mm -hmm. mainly like the cake today. Mm -hmm. So I'm pulling out all of my serveware and vases and things just to sort of get an idea of what we have. This is not how we're gonna set it up necessarily, but just sort of getting, a, getting an idea. We're gonna put away all the stuff we don't need for now in the fridge. Zoe has assembled the candles, which I think is cute. So y'all see the vibe, it's a multicolored, springtime bonanza. <laughs> so we're making progress. I just pulled out my cloth and napkin collection. Uh, Sadie has chosen the rustic frayed, natural toned. Deep to loom. Deep. <laughs> Not the deep, just the saloon. Tulum inspired. <laughs> I don't think this is. Is this how it goes? It is, but it's just wrinkled. Oh, okay. So maybe like this one is looks nicer because yeah. it's not as wrinkled. Maybe that just needs to be this ironed. One. This is the only wrinkly one. We've right. taken out my natural woven placemats, yes. the plain white mm -hmm. plates. The Tulum napkin. The Tulum inspired the cloth and napkin. <laughs> we are considering pairing it with my copper cutlery. Perhaps, I mean, why not? I don't know how you're supposed to put it, but maybe. So far, so good though, it's coming together. This is going to 
work. Raven's overthinking it. Like the burger that she is. See. You just gotta. Okay. May I have a small boy? Yes. You know. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, inspo pick up on the screen. Here's our inspo pick. This right is what I'm trying to make. A plate. Sadie says, spread the icing, yes. cut the cake. Y'all can Yes. Extra you know what I love about Raven? <laughs> is I know Raven's letting me do this because she doesn't trust what I'm doing. <laughs> I want you to show the people. <laughs> So it's 2.30, Sadie left, Zoe left to go to the store to pick up some last minute things that we decided we wanted. We decided we wanted just a few more flowers to finish setting the table. And that's really all we needed. So she just went to go get those. We also needed the flowers to be able to do our floral ice bucket mold situation, which definitely needs to be done tonight so it can freeze overnight and be ready for tomorrow. Yeah, we pretty much finished prepping everything that could be prepped ahead of time other than, like I said, I still need to do the ice mold. I need to finish the goodie bags. There's a couple of things I need to still finish. And I also do not have an outfit. So when Zaya gets home from school in a couple minutes, I'm gonna take her with me to go shopping because low key, she sort of needs an outfit too. Long story short, we made good progress. We have the table pretty much mostly set. It's looking really cute so far. We have all of our groceries and ingredients. We have our little mini cakes made. There's a few more finishing touches that I have to do this evening and I really have to find my outfit. We're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, right now while I wait for Zoe to get back with the flowers to do the ice mold, I am finishing the goodie bag. So I just need to finish weeding the Cricut vinyl and just stick it onto the bags. This particular metallic vinyl is like giving me a hard time. Okay, I finished the little goodie bags. They're super simple, just something slight. Um, I think I'm going to write cards to go with it for a little thoughtful, sentimental touch, but the bags themselves are just sort of like, it's like a little emergency bag to keep in your car or something. You know, hair clips, scrunchies, powder puffs, little sayings on the front. I think they turned out cute. I would have liked to do something a little bit more, just a little bit more, but with the time allotted, I feel like this turned out okay. So I'm gonna leave these here so I don't forget about them. Also, they will be making their own bracelet that I bought all the stuff for and taking that home and I'm kind of giving them a little jewelry class. So that technically is part of the goodie bag, I guess. Zoe is wrapping up at the store now buying the rest of the flowers. And we also thought that it would be nice to let the girls take home a bouquet of flowers as part of their gift as well. Just because, I mean, I don't have any use to keep all these flowers at my house and we have extra vases and everything. So they can literally just take home like an entire vase of flowers and that'll be more useful for them to take it home and enjoy it versus me just keeping them all at my house and it sort of doubles as a gift as well. Flowers, goodie bags, bracelets, and like a thoughtful note. I feel like that's good, right? It is almost 3.30. My dad should be getting home with Zaya any minute now from school. I had planned to take Zaya with me after school to go shopping for my outfit for the brunch. I just had not gotten a chance to get anything up until today. It is supposed to start flash flooding any minute now though. And I would really not like to be out and about with Zaya shopping at a flash flood this afternoon. So that's looking like a no-go. So I just rummaged through my closet to try to find something. The problem is we had a really specific vision and theme. We wanted the beautiful tea party dresses like this. Like House of CB has this collection right now that would be perfect. But Sadie, first of all, ordered something from the collection and it ended up not working out for her. So she's currently right now trying to find a last minute outfit as well. I never got a chance to order anything. I don't think I'm gonna get to 
go shopping today. So I'm left with trying to find something in my closet that is close to that, but I don't typically buy those types of clothes. So I'm like struggling finding an outfit for my own brunch where I'm the one who set the dress code and now I don't even have nothing that goes with the dress code. I'm gonna have to try some stuff on and just see, but I don't know. Good morning, it's Saturday morning. It's 8.30, which I already am running late because I have a lot to do before 10 a.m. I did end up going shopping yesterday evening. I didn't vlog because I was in such a rush, but after I had said that I thought I wasn't gonna get to go, the weather sort of calmed down. It wasn't raining, so I was like, let me just hurry up and go before it starts raining. It didn't end up starting to rain until later in the evening. So we had time to go to a couple of stores. I went to Old Navy, Marshalls, and then ended up at Nordstrom Rack. There's really not that good of places to go shopping in person near me in such a rush, but I had the most luck at Nordstrom Rack. Well, I thought I did until I started trying stuff on. And as you can see, I was hating everything I was trying on. I ended up liking this last strapless pink dress the best, even though I still didn't really love it. And so I ended up getting it in a size smaller in this periwinkle blue color because that pink one that I tried on was just a little bit too big and this is the only one they had in extra small. They only had the blue in extra small and I didn't even try it on because I was in such a rush. I just grabbed it based on how the other one looked. So here's my dress. It's not what I originally envisioned myself wearing to this brunch, but I think I can make it work. At least I have something. I mean, if all else fails, I do have a couple of backup options that I pulled from my closet, but it is what it is at this point. I need to get in the shower and do this hair. I also need to do Zaya's hair and get her dressed. And then I told Sadie and Zoe to be here at 10 a.m. so that we can sort of really start getting the last few things ready for the brunch. And then Taylor and Mimi, our other guests for the brunch, will be arriving at 11 a.m. So we gotta get a move on. Here is the dress. Sadie and Zoe are already here. It's 10 o'clock. My hair is not curled. My makeup is not done. I have the wig attached. I have the lashes attached. I have the dress on. I still have a lot more to do to try to get myself fully together, but I hate this dress. It's just the straplessness is, is falling down. It's not really... Now that I see what Sadie has on, because she was also struggling with her outfit, so she has on sort of a more casual spring dress. I'm thinking about just switching to something I already had, because this is just super uncomfortable and just like, I don't know, I'm not loving it. Okay, here's my other dress that I already had from a long time ago that I was gonna wear if I didn't find anything else. And honestly, I might just wear this. It's a little like frumpy, like the way it fits, it's giving like nightgown, but I don't know, it's more comfortable. And it's still sort of in the tea party vibe. I might just wear this. Okay, it's 1020. We have Chef Sadie, Sadie in the building. She's making the pancakes. Yes, we have oh. Zoe in the building. She's about to prep the I'm mimosas. Doing the dishes again. Well, She's always oh. making me do the dishes. Oh, the damn dishes. Checking on our goods, our cakes, still look great in the fridge. The and then cool. the ice thingy turned out pretty good. So we'll have to pull that out. And we, I think we've just decided we're just gonna obviously take the white thing out to make the hole in the middle, but just leave it in the glass to be easier. Then we've got to pull out all the rest of our little goodies. So Sadie brought little gifts for the girls. I have my little gifts for the girls. So we have those lined up. And then we have the little jewelry stations prepped. So we're using these little paint trays as a way to hold the little beads. And then we have the little string in the middle. So that worked out perfectly for the four of us. And then the rest of the tools and supplies are just in this thing, the stuff I already had that we're gonna need. And then the letter beads, since we're all gonna need to like choose whatever letters, we just have them in this little bowl. I also have these charms. I'm gonna go ahead and set out the letters that each mom needs for their child, if that makes sense. So Sadie has A and M for Alea and Malachi. Mimi has D for Denver, her daughter. Taylor has L for Levi, and I obviously have Z for Zaya. So we can just add that little charm to our bracelet. So that's all good to go.
All right, y'all, it is 7.06 p.m. It has been a bit of a long day. The brunch was very nice. Sadie and I were very happy with how it turned out. It's all sort of mostly cleared out now. Taylor and Mimi probably left around two o'clock and then Sadie and the kids stayed a little bit longer so the kids could play with Zaya for a little bit longer. And she left closer to like four or five o'clock. And then my mom came over because we needed to talk content and talk business a little bit. She flew out to San Diego and went to this thing like at the YouTube headquarters. It was basically sort of like this conference networking event type thing for the team members of Top Creators. And she said that she learned a lot and she had some thoughts and some ideas based off of that that she wanted to talk to me about. Basically forever trying to improve my content and learn how to grow on YouTube and you know talk to other top creators and talk to their teams and see what they're doing and be able to learn from them so it's always really cool to be included and invited to these sort of things like from YouTube themselves because it's like I'm qualified for that me little me and then also you're bumping elbows rubbing shoulders with some of the top top creators in the game good mythical mornings Brett and Link's team was there my mom met them, not Rhett and Link themselves, but their team. And like Mr. Beast and Patrick Starr's people were there and Jackie Yana's people were there. Hope Scope, like a lot of big names. Basically, she just wanted to tell me about it and tell me what she learned. So we were talking about that. It's just been this ongoing conversation and I'm sure you guys have picked up on it from my vlogs and from my podcast. I'm in a space where I've been on YouTube for so long. It needs to be like Raven 2.0 now. There needs to be a refresh, there needs to be a change. I need to figure out how to keep maintaining my presence on YouTube, how to keep growing. I can't just plateau and then fall off. I don't want that to happen. I'm sure you guys have seen that happen to a lot of creators where it's like they're on this upward growth and then it sort of just dies down and then you're like, what happened to, what happened to blah, blah, blah? Where did they go? They don't post anymore. What happened to them? I don't want that to happen to me. In order to avoid that, it's these constant conversations about how do we grow? How do we improve? What do we need to change? How has the platform changed? And I told y'all before that I'm burnt out. I've been burnt out for a long time. So I'll leave it at that for now. Maybe I will discuss further in my podcast because that's really what my podcast is for, to talk about these things a little bit deeper. In the meantime, while we were sitting there having that conversation, my ottoman finally came in. Remember this ottoman I ordered from Amazon? It was supposed to come a week ago and it finally just came in. So it was late. Definitely not prime shipping, but okay. It just came with the little legs that you have to screw on, but that's it. I mean, you know, it's pretty much as I expected. It's definitely not a wow factor piece. You know, it's just a black ottoman. I do like the fact that it'll give me a lot of storage inside of here. Like it's a lot of good usable space that I can hide some of my unsightly office clutter such as like some of the stuff that's on my desk I can put in here. That way my desk can be a lot more cleared off and pretty. And then it also doubles as obviously another place to sit. If for some reason I had that many people <laughs> in here, usually it's like my mom, Zoe, Taylor, Max. So I guess it just, I don't know. I didn't really need a whole bunch of seating space, but I just felt like that little spot needed something and I definitely needed the hidden storage. I don't know, I think it could look nice once I get my curtains. If you can imagine the drapes on either side of that window, sort of making a big impact and adding some texture to that wall. I think it could look nice. I mean, it's just a black ottoman, not too exciting, but I think I like it. I think I'm gonna keep it. What do y'all think? Comment down below, let me know. I really wanna hurry up and get these curtains. I know I keep saying that, but I'm just like, I guess I don't really love any of the three options that I showed you guys before. Maybe that's the, the reason why I haven't ordered them because I'm like, I don't really love any of those options. Maybe I need to find a completely different thing to do for the curtains, but I just really wanna get this office finished up 
up. That'll be like the last main thing in here. Of course, I can always judge the little details, but the curtains are the last like big thing that need to be in here to really finish off the space. So I wanna get that done ASAP so that it can feel like a completed space. Same sort of thing that I was talking about with like my outdoor area, you know, just getting that last umbrella and just the last little things put in so it can just feel like the base is complete. And there's a few more areas around the house that need sort of just those last finishing touches and then I can just feel better about my home and just stop feeling like it's just so unfinished um, after so long. So I will be prioritizing, bougie, what you doing in that box? I'll be prioritizing getting these last main key items all around the house. But anyways, I'm tired if you can't tell. But the brunch was a success. I'm glad that we did that. Tomorrow for actual Mother's Day, we're all gonna go on a family lunch. My parents and my siblings and Zaya and I, of course with my mom, we're gonna do lunch and you know, just have a little chill day tomorrow, hopefully. But I did wanna end off this vlog by saying, in regards to what I was just talking about as far as trying to keep up with the YouTube wave and always trying to change and improve and feeling a little overwhelmed with these constant conversations about that. Based on the conversation that I did just have with my mom about it, this might be my last weekly vlog. I know, I know, I know. It feels like I just brought the series back and we thought that I was gonna stick to it. And I did stick to it. I mean, what is this, episode 15 or 16? That's a good amount of episodes, okay? I stayed pretty consistent with it for a good amount of time. But I think it might be time to do something different. Not that I'm gonna quit YouTube, not that I'm gonna stop posting weekly, not that I'm gonna stop stopped sharing my life, but just do it in a different way, a different format, a different focus, a different, I need to do something different, you know? Me bringing the weekly vlog series back, that's bringing back something that I did years ago. Do I wanna just keep doing the same thing I've already been doing for years? No, I don't. It's time for a refresh. It's time for a real, true refresh, and I'm not exactly sure what that means or what exactly that's gonna look like, but I think it looks like not doing weekly vlogs. <laughs> so I don't know, stay tuned. <laughs>